All right, guys. This is Sean, and uh, welcome to Project Nano. And as you can see here, I've got a nice piece of live rock. I went down to the LFS this morning and found a nine and a half pound solid piece. This comes from the same uh, distributor that gets the uh, live rock I have in my uh, Pico, and it's beautiful lights up real nice and what I really like about it uh, since this is going to be a, a pretty much coral uh, reef uh, it's got lots of place to, um, to place coral so really really cool piece of rock uh, kind of pricey uh, at nine and a half pounds I paid uh, sixty dollars for it but uh, I'd rather do this than trying to piece a couple pieces together. So uh, what you see at the bottom of the tank there is actually a uh, gutter screen. Very cheap. I got it from Home Depot. And it's $1.87 for a whole roll. And a whole roll will probably take care of a few aquariums. So um, what I measured was that this thing is 11 and a half inches wide and 8 and a half inches deep from the front of the tank to the um, front of the uh, sump area so I just measured off 17 inches and then cut that in half and uh, kind of overlapped them there in the center so um, the next thing I'm going to do is um, go ahead and place some um, live sand in there so that's the next step and I will check back in. Thanks for watching. All right, so here we have the sand placed in. I'm going a little bit deep on the sand because I plan to put a, uh, a goby and a pistol uh, shrimp uh, pair in, in here um, for at least a couple of the creatures. But like I said, it's going to be mostly focused on coral. So um, for now, we are going to do just a natural cycle of the tank. So this one will take much longer than my Project Pico uh, did. Because uh, I won't be using uh, much of anything except live sand and live rock to uh, stimulate the cycle. So next I'm going to mix up some salt water and add it. Um, I did a slight modification to the uh, tank here, just like my uh, Project Pico. I went ahead and placed some uh, tape over the slot so that water um, stays on the other side of the display tank and the water in here becomes dependent, independent excuse me, until the overflow uh, is activated. So uh, that's going to uh, create more water flow. And I do have the Rio Plus 800 pump that I can throw in here for uh, more um, water flow if necessary, if the, the coral calls for that later. Uh, but for now, we're just going to stick with the uh, stock pump, uh, which is going to give us um, 158 GPH at the maximum set in which it's set at. So just a couple of notes. I did have some difficulties uh, inserting the pieces through the wall there. Apparently, the, the hole wasn't drilled wide enough so um, what I did was I pushed it in from the outside and just kinda turned um, the piece that goes through to widen it up a little bit um, just to you know get whatever crud or, or whatever wasn't cut off of uh, the hole so um, we have the biometer there we have the foam there and I've got a nice uh, cobalt uh, heater that's gonna give me the temperature as well it's pretty accurate and I've got the stock pump down in there. So next is this adding water. I'm leaving the uh, compartment open for the um, skimmer at some point. So that's where we are. So see you guys back in a few minutes. All right, guys. Here is the Project Nano filled with water. Since I taped up the uh, front compartment, I went ahead and 
filled it first, but only halfway, then I filled up the back compartment so as not to add pressure on the tape because I'm trying to keep them separated. And that seemed to work okay. I didn't see any signs of leaking in the back. So um, as long as the pressure stays right on both sides, um, I think that seal will hold up. So water should settle in the next day or two. And I'll go ahead and add brine shrimp at some point to uh, get the cycle started. So that's where we are. Thank you for watching my video.